Hello and welcome to my weekly video blog and today on A Vogel Talks Menopause I'm going to be discussing how to boost your self-image. Now if you like my tips and advice then please subscribe and hit the bell icon to make sure that you get notified of my new videos each week. Our poor self-image and self-confidence very often gets a real battering in the menopause and it comes from all angles. It's not just the fact that our hormones are starting to fall and that can give us a little bit of a sort of low mood and, and despondency, but there's lots of other things that can affect it as well. So I thought today we would look at some of the other causes and also just some little tips that might make you feel better at the end of the day. So the physical symptoms, what physical symptoms that go on in the menopause can, can affect how we feel about ourselves. Well, our skin starts to change, we can start to notice a, a few wrinkles, a little bit of sagging here and there, and our skin can get a lot drier. We, 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 just, we just look different and that can have a real impact on how we feel about ourselves as, as well. A number of women will suffer from hair loss and, and you know our hair it's so important it's our crowning glory and we talk about having a bad hair day so if our hair starts to get really thin or starts to fall out again this can have a, an absolutely huge and devastating impact on how we feel. There's the weight gain, there's the bloating, there's the fact that we can't fit into all our nice clothes and we feel that we just look like a, a bit of a frump most of the time. There can also be flushes and sweats. If, if you're getting hot flushes or sweats and you're in company or, or you're at work, that's going to make you feel very, very self-conscious and it's going to make you feel very embarrassed as well. The emotional symptoms that can occur because of this too, it can be low self-esteem and as I mentioned before that loss of confidence and this is a big one especially if you're at work and you're dealing with a, a lot of um, people on, on a daily basis. If you start to lose your confidence and your belief in yourself, then that can have a huge impact on your work, how your work goes, and also how you deal with other people as well. And I know a number of women have told me that they really, they end up being fearful about going into work purely because they, they can't face what's happening to them on a, a regular basis. There's neediness too. We can get very needy during the menopause and, and that can have a big effect on our confidence. A lot of women find that, you know, they were independent, they could get things done and suddenly they just feel as if they, they can't even take a step outside the front door. It can also be mood swings that can affect how we see ourselves as well. Fatigue, if our motivation goes and we feel really tired all the time, then just the thought of looking after ourselves and anything to, to do with self-care just goes totally out of the window. And there's also self-criticism, and this is a huge one. We are so bad at being kind to ourselves, and I'm just as guilty as everyone. Just think about this. When you get up in the morning, that first time that you look in the mirror, what are you saying inside your head? And I bet most of you will say, oh, I criticise myself, you look in the mirror and you go, oh, who's that? It's someone's taken me over or, oh, I can see another wrinkle. I look horrible. Don't I look awful? Look at my hair. Look at my belly. Oh, my goodness. So we have started the day off severely criticising ourselves. Now, if you were going to meet a friend for lunch or for a little drink, do you go up to your friend and say, you look awful, oh, that dress is terrible, your bum looks big in that, or look at all your wrinkles, your hair's a state. You wouldn't ever think about treating your friends the way that you are treating yourselves. And this drip, and it is, every single day, we are criticizing ourselves, how we look and how we feel and how we can't cope and how we can't do this anymore. And that will really affect our confidence over time. So this is a, a really um, huge one here. We've also got loss of libido. And if we take that into account, and a lot of women still 
want uh, an active sex life, they want to be close to their partner and if their libido goes out the window, their self-confidence is going to go, they're going to feel very guilty and also if you compound that with weight gain and that you, you're losing confidence in your own body and a lot of women tell me now that they just can't face their partner seeing them naked anymore this is going to have a big impact on your sex life as well. So you can see already that just this um, little bit about losing our own self-confidence and, and our self-identity can have a huge impact on all different areas of our day-to-day -day life. So what can you do with this one? We've got to focus on the positive and it's not easy, especially, you know, this mirror thing, if, if you like, it can be very, very difficult. But what you can do, and I'd love you all to try this and maybe get back to me to, to see how you get on, is to try and say something positive in the mirror at some point. Be more aware of how you're treating yourself. And if you feel a negative thought coming up, criticizing how you look or, or how you're feeling in the mirror, is try and either stop it and replace it with a positive one or try and add some positivity at the end of your conversation in your head. It's difficult, you know, I really try and, and do this just to make myself feel better. And let's face it, if somebody gives you a compliment, somebody says, oh, you're lovely today, if you go into work and say, oh, that's a nice cardigan you've got on, then that really boosts you up for quite a while. And I do try when I'm leaving the house, I have one last look in, in the mirror just to make sure I'm reasonably presentable. And I will leave the house on a positive note. I'll just, it doesn't have to be much. You can even tell yourself a little fib, but you can just say, I'm looking not too bad today. I'm looking fine today. I feel okay today. And that can be enough to give your self-esteem a lovely little boost just as you start your day. You need to give yourself some me time. This is absolutely vital because we, we don't do this again in the menopause. And very often if I'm doing the little workshops or I'm speaking face to face to someone, I will say to them, where are you on your list of priorities today? And I have not met one woman who has even said that they are on their list. So this is an important one. We need to make sure that we are in our list of priorities every single day, just to give ourselves that little bit of extra um, self-care. You can do some simple things like change your hairstyle or stay, change your, your style of clothes. I know something that gave me a really great boost, and this is something, if, if there's a group of you, you can actually have a little colours party. You can get someone in to help you pick what your colours are. It just basically means that some colours suit you and some don't. And I used to wear a lot of um, sort of yellows and oranges and browns and fawns and creams, and I learned that these colours are very draining for me. They don't make me look good. So you learn what colours you look best in. It makes shopping for clothes so much easier because you just focus on those colours. And knowing that you're wearing something that suits you, again, is going to give you that little bit of a boost. Look at your skincare regime. Yes, our skin does change as we go through the menopause and it's something that, you know, at the end of the day, we do have to accept. But you might find that the skincare reg regime that you've had for a long time isn't actually the best one now for your skin. So even going to some of the big department stores and, and maybe getting a, a little facial or something and, and learn how to maybe use some new creams, how to maybe change your, your, your makeup as well, can make a lot of difference. And I know for a lot of women, your skin needs a lot more moisturising and feeding, so maybe look at some of the more natural creams and, and skin preparations um, as well. You could go for a new hobby, you know, if there's, if there's a small group of you, try something new, um, 
try a, a, a nice exercise class. And what I love to see now is that there's quite a lot of women's only gyms springing up. So even if you feel that you've put on a little bit of weight and you're feeling a little bit self-conscious, you're not at least having to do your exercises in, in front of a, a lot of men as well. And for some women, it's a comfort knowing that you're just going to be in amongst other women um, rather than, than kind of mixed groups. You remember that your partner, now if you've got a male partner and you're roughly about the same age, then just remember that they're going to be going through the aging process as well. And they're often not immune to what's happening to their bodies, you know. It's not just us. Men very often will start to go bald in middle age. They'll start to get that middle age spread. They will start to get hair springing up in all sorts of different places. So, you know, just remember it's not just you, but it could be your partner that this is affecting as well and sometimes that can just make you feel that little bit uh, that little bit better think about your diet are you feeding yourself nutritionally well because if you're feeling down if, if you're feeling low and, and I've got a bit of a low mood then sometimes just boosting your diet something like vitamin B complex magnesium magnesium is your happy mineral so remember loads of magnesium can make you feel better about yourself as well and remember sleep because if we are really tired, if we haven't slept well, then our mood's going to be low the minute we wake up in the morning as well. So it's important to get a proper um, sleeping pattern. And it's difficult in the menopause. We know because of falling oestrogen and night sweats um, going on too. So a lot of things can interrupt your sleep, but that will have a knock-on effect on how you feel. You can also look at the flower essences. These are lovely for the emotional issues. So we have got confidence essence. So if you feel that you need to give your confidence and your belief in yourself a little bit of a boost, you could try that one. And for anything to do with being a woman, we've got our lovely female essence as well. Now, whilst I was looking into this particular subject, I found a lovely little quote, and here it is. Don't stop looking after yourself at the exact time in your life that you need to care for yourself the most. So this is really important. It's a lovely little saying, try and get that one in your head. And I know the first time I read it, I actually felt quite emotional. I thought, wow, you know, it's so important, this self-care. Hopefully you've enjoyed this one, slightly different to a lot of the physical symptoms we get, but nonetheless, this is just as important. Do let me know how you get on with the mirror and see if you can be a little bit more positive if you've been feeling down lately. And until then, I will see you next week for another edition of A Vogel Talks Menopause.